gets 1%. I feel badly for Orlando that it's this small. However, I think that game bright five, future. bright future, but the game five was the swing game. I don't think they're going to be able to win the next two. So right. Cleveland, I think Orlando think actually, seven? yeah, I do think it goes seven. Cleveland gets 2%. Because I do think they're going to win the series, but I think that either of those teams was going to get beaten soundly by Boston. I at least think Orlando could have been a pain in the butt for Boston because of their defense, but it doesn't matter. 3% Indiana. So I don't actually think, here's what is so disconcerting for the Bucks, and we'll talk more about them next week, that I don't think the Pacers played great in this series. They did. And the fact that they won it despite that and won it the way they did and ran away with it yesterday is really troubling. Indiana's at 3%. Now, there are six teams remaining. I think all six of these teams are legitimate championship contenders. Wow. I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this whole tape play. And full disclosure, I recorded this after the Clippers lost. Um, so, we know the Clippers are gone. Um, but the disrespect of OKC is insane to me. Insane. OKC is an amazing team. They are the, a great team. And to say that they're only 8% chance of winning this or that they're going to be below the Dallas Mavs is insane or below the New York Knicks is insane. Insane. Or even equal as them. I'm not sure where he's going to put them because he might put the Knicks and the, the Mavs right there. I don't. I, I did not watch this clip. So, um, but if he puts them, it, it just, they should be head and shoulders above. So just absurd. I don't understand why everyone is so quick to just say that OKC has no chance. It just makes no sense to me. I put OKC at 8%. They, and again, that might feel unfair. They were the it number is. one seed in the West. They earned that in the tougher conference. They swept round one with somewhat ease. I know a couple of the games were close. I just don't think that that team is at that age going to win four consecutive rounds. And I also think that in the next round, they're going to be playing a red-hot Dallas Mavericks team, but I give them 8%. Now, different shade of red orange. Red-hot Dallas I think it'll Mavericks be orange team. On the pie. Oh, no, it's blue. That's fine, too. Yeah. The New York Knicks, far and away their biggest slice yet. I think the Knicks, they fought for that two seed. They didn't duck anybody, and now it pays dividends. They got... Through the tough first-round matchup with Philly, now they get what will be an electric, right now I checked today, $600 get-in price for game one of round two against the Pacers. Anybody that thought, oh, maybe tickets will go down because it's not Philly, nope, it's just going to keep going up. The Knicks believe right now they Josh Hart's hitting game-winning threes. Tibbs has seven guys he trusts, and he's going to play them until they pass out, and they're mm-hmm. a son of a gun for anybody <laughs> to deal with. Tick above them. Minnesota Timberwolves, the number one defense in all of basketball, a budding super duper star in Anthony Edwards, and maybe just maybe some of the trouble for Rudy Gobert historically in the postseason has been solved by the other players around him and the fact that he has another big alongside him in Carl Anthony Downs. I can't dismiss that as a possibility. Brew thinks the Timberwolves are going to beat the Nuggets, in which case they are going to have a massive slice of the pie. Speaking of the Nuggets, they are next at 17%. Uh, hey, Wilds, you'll have your moment. I just said that. Hey. You got you this is unreal right now. Because first off, I think that the Timberwolves are going to beat the Denver Nuggets in the series. I always thought that it was going to be competitive. And I, as I made previous videos, I said, I really don't know. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and I'm going to give it, I'm going to let this play and then I'll give a deeper breakdown why. Um, but I think that the Timberwolves will beat the Nuggets. I think it's going to be a very competitive series, but I think they'll beat the Nuggets. And then I think it'll be a toss up between uh, the Nuggets and OKC. I potentially, I believe I'm going to be leading, leave, leading towards um, the Timberwolves. But this idea that the Dallas Mavericks have a better chance at winning the title than the Denver Nuggets or the Minnesota Timberwolves is insane to me. Absolute, utter nonsense. The, no, I, drive on the clip. The, uh, yeah, that's, you know what? Fair point. Fair point. Uh, I think it is just a very difficult path. I think that that loss to San Antonio is already rearing its head, where they had to fight against the Lakers, and what? now they get 
Well, they did. They, 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 they had to fight against the Lakers. They come out of that Lakers series not fully whole, as Bruce said. Guys got banged up, and now they have to play the best defense in basketball by a mile, and I don't think they have someone to guard Anthony Edwards. While you can put Aaron Gordon on LeBron James because of the size stuff, Anthony Edwards too fast. So I don't know what they're going to do with Anthony Edwards, sure. and I think that the Timberwolves are uniquely positioned to guard uh, Denver, so they stay at 17%. A tick above them, the Dallas Mavericks, who, despite Luka Doncic not playing well in this series until Game 5, are positioned to move on to Round 2 tonight, to go into uh, Western Conference semifinals, where they will absolutely feel like right or wrong it's wrong that they have the two best players on the court in Luke and Kyrie. I know that's yeah, not right. fair to Shea, but I'm sure that's how they'll feel. And every who would who would you rather have, SGA or or Kawhi or, or Kawhi or Kyrie? Yeah, I think we all know that answer. Everyone on that team knows their exact role. And then the biggest slice is a team that I don't think is the best team, but has the clearest path by a mile. They are the only team left that I am certain is going to be in the conference final. Yeah, they they obviously had the Celtics obviously had the easiest path ever. Arguably maybe one of the easiest paths in the history of the playoffs. Okay. Let's actually officially break this down now. All right, as I said, full disclosure, watch this uh the Clippers have already lost, okay? Gone, done. See you bye. Um and so the Mavericks, the Mavericks beat the Clippers, a Clippers team that's not good, a Clippers team that's inconsistent, a Clippers team who didn't have Kawhi Leonard. And I said before that I thought the Clippers would beat the Mavs with a healthy Kawhi Leonard. And yet they still put up a fight even without Kawhi Leonard. And they really shot themselves in the foot because they pushed Kawhi Leonard out there, who was clearly not 100%, which is now hobbled which is now actually hurting you because you're now not playing. You're better off playing with five healthy guys than four healthy guys and an injured Kawhi because you're, it's like you're practically playing, you know, a man down. It really, really hurts you. And so that hurt them significantly. They were better when Kawhi was not playing at all. And so I really wonder if he just didn't play at all the whole series, how that series potentially would have had, would have unfolded. Again, Luka is unbelievable. Absolutely, undeniably an absolute monster. He is too immature. He does not have a good enough team around him. And he will, he, he is, his immaturity is a big issue. I mean, you should see, I mean, the way he carries on and screams and that's not championship winning basketball. It just is not. Okay. Now you have, um, again, I'm not even going to really entertain the idea that the Pacers can win the title or uh, Cleveland, you know, Orlando. I mean, that's just silly to me. Honestly, I'm not going to waste your time because I know you guys all know they don't have any chance. Sorry if you're a fan of those teams. They do not have a chance. Okay. Now the Knicks. The Knicks played great, as I keep saying it, organized chaos. Organized chaos basketball. And they were able to take advantage of that against the Sixers who also had lack of playoff experience. Um, Joel Embiid obviously banged up. Um, their big star for the Sixers was Tyrese Maxey, and the dude just turned 23 years old. He's, you know, he's he's learning, and, he, you know, he doesn't really have a, a ton of experience. He hasn't really been, um, the, the Sixers are terrible at developing talent, quite honestly. Um, so I know nothing to take away from the Knicks at all. I do stand by that if I think if Joel Embiid was 100% healthy, which of course is never, but if he was actually healthy, legitimately healthy, the Sixers win that series. But that's, but again, all credit to the Knicks for winning. They played, you know, winning basketball and the Sixers did not. The Knicks are obviously to me going to beat the Pacers. I just think that that'll be, it's a shame. It would have been cool to see them go up against um, a very tough, um, like a, a full strength Milwaukee Bucks. Um, which I think the Bucks would have probably have won, quite honestly, considering how close it was with the Sixers, even though the Sixers did not look great in many, many stretches. Um, so I do think that the, that the Knicks versus the Celtics will be a pretty interesting series. Um, but I think if everyone's healthy on the Celtics, which is a question mark at this point, um, I think the Celtics got it. And even if everyone is, I mean, again, it depends who's banged up, but I, I think that the Celtics still... Um, we'll take that series. Now to the more interesting, more juicy stuff. I think OKC beats Dallas. 
OKC is younger, but they are way more mature than Dallas. Way more mature. And it's not even close. Okay? So I'm banking on OKC to win. Now we got the Timberwolves versus Denver. And I'm going to talk about this um, in the next few days. I'm going to be talking about this, I guess, all week, quite honestly. I think the Timberwolves will win. So we, so Nick Wright brought up before about the Denver Nuggets and how the Lakers were beating them like 78% of the time. And I called that out and said, yes, that's accurate, but that doesn't really mean anything because LeBron and AD fade away. They don't have the stamina. They don't have the strength. They don't have the consistency. They just can't hold on to it throughout a whole game. So that stat makes it look closer than it really is. Um, and that proved to be correct. Uh, and so with that being the case, and I said, you know, after watching that full series, I said, honestly, if LeBron James was five years younger, I think that the Lakers win that series. And I stand by that. And I think that's, you know, I, I don't think that's that, that far of a stretch because if you give LeBron James an extra 5% boost, the margins were close enough where like that should have been the difference. And again, I don't love to play those little stats of like, well, D'Angelo Russell just scored eight more points and so-and-so. I don't think that's what I'm doing in that perspective, in that situation, because we know exactly who LeBron James was five years ago. So we're not, it's not that hard to imagine. So that's that part of it. Here's the thing about Minnesota. Their players that are in their prime are actually young. They have the legs. They have the stamina. They have the resilience. They just don't have the pure championship level experience that the Denver Nuggets have. But that's why I think that the Timberwolves will be able to sustain these intense moments, these tough games. We'll be able to go into game three, game four, game five, and not be exhausted like LeBron James is, like AD is. So I think that's where the Timberwolves will be able to genuinely beat the Nuggets. And that's exactly, that's honestly what, at this point, that's what I'm predicting. I kept going back and forth. I already posted a video before. I was like, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I don't know. I don't know. And before any of the playoffs even started, I was talking to Joe in the comments before Joe or Joey, I forget what is the, the name is at this point. And I said, you know, Denver is great. And I said, you know, they're probably the team to beat, but they're not a juggernaut, you know? And me and him kind of had a conversation about that because I said, listen, and I said, actually, just a couple months ago, I said, it's really interesting to see what Denver's going to do because everyone's talking that they're like this dynasty or that they have the potential to be the dynasty and how good Jokic is and all of that. And they are, they are, they are great. But I said, like, in order to truly be that team, you have to win multiple championships. You have to go to two, three, four championships, like in a row. That's what LeBron James did you know, with multiple teams, that's with the Miami Heat, Cleveland Cavaliers, that's what the Golden State Warriors did, you know, that's what the San Antonio Spurs did, that's what the Lakers did back with Kobe and Shaq and or just Kobe, like, that's what happens, and I don't know if Denver Nuggets can do that, I kept saying that Denver Nuggets are a great team, but they're able to take advantage of the fact that all of these other great players are old now, Steph Curry, KD, LeBron James, and that these other up-and-coming teams are too young okc minnesota but you know what after watching these playoffs now i'm like minnesota is light years above what i thought they would be same thing with okc so denver nuggets and this is what i think i've already said too like a month or two ago i said this is their best chance to win and if they don't win this year they are not going to have an easy path next year even if they repeat like i'm not even predicting a three-peat at this point unless they really boost up their team so I really think the Timberwolves can win this game. The big thing that I think the Timberwolves have going against them is the same idea of organized chaos, is that the Nuggets can endure the organized chaos because they know exactly what to do. Jokic, when, you know, I, I, I see this all the time with these younger players, right? There's 10 seconds um, in the shot clock and they're, and they're, you know, it's, I don't know, it doesn't even have to, it could be in the third quarter, second quarter, it doesn't have to be in a pivotal moment in the, moment in the game but they're kind of trapped. There's like three players kind of surrounding them. And the younger players kind of panic in that moment, especially in the playoffs. They don't know what to do. They force up a shot. They do, you know, they don't, they don't know what to do. They, they panic, which is understandable. They're 22. I saw Tyrus Maxey do this against the Knicks. He panicked. And I always say you, that's understandable. They're literally 22, 23 years old. That's just the way it is. And I think that the Knicks, uh, the Knicks, I think that the Timberwolves are a little bit more susceptible. And that's what I've seen them already do before. I don't see that with the Nuggets. You don't see the Steph Currys doing that. You don't see the KDs doing that, the LeBrons. They know how to keep their composure. It's not to say that they never force a shot up or make a bad play, but it's not, it's, you could see the panic. 
that's the beautiful thing about basketball is that the, the the what we get to watch, we really get to see the players. And you can see their eyes, their faces. You can see the panic in their moment. It comes through the screen, right? which is what I really love about basketball. You can, you can really get such a greater sense of the emotions, which is why fans connect so much more deeply with the actual players rather than the teams and the uniforms like in the NFL. And so that is what the huge advantage of the Denver Nuggets have. Jokic, when the clock is going down and there's eight seconds in the shot clock and maybe, you know, he's being double teamed, there's no panic. There's not that same level of panic. Um, The Timberwolves are still more susceptible to that. But like I said, you know, I I think the Timberwolves win this game, but it's not like I'm going to say, oh my God, without a doubt, the Denver Nuggets have no chance at winning the series. I think it'll be a very fascinating back and forth. Um, But yeah. And now in terms of the Celtics, you know, at this point, I don't really know. If it was the Nuggets, OKC, or the Timberwolves going up against the Celtics, I really don't know. I, and, I, and like I said, like I always say to you guys, I'm never going to just give an answer for the sake of giving an answer, right? I'm not a hot take artist. I'm not trying to be bold and be like, I told you, I, I predicted that the OKC was going to beat the Celtics in the championship. I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I just, I have no desire to do that. Um, as so as of right now, I, I really don't know. Um, I would have to see the way how these games unfold, right? I'd have to see how the Celtics play the Knicks. If that's a close series, if that goes to six, seven games, or most of the games are close, then I earn saying that they're not going to win the championship. If they blow out the Knicks and it's not even close and, you know, it's a, and it's like a, you know, an OKC does not really look that good, but they somehow pass, you know, Dallas because, you know, Luka goes so cold in game seven or something like, you know, I, I have to wait for those other games to unfold. But as of right now, if I had to guess, I would pick Denver, Minnesota and OKC over Boston. Um, just because I don't, you know, I, I don't know if I really trust Boston just yet, quite honestly. And not to mention, I know they beat Miami pretty handily, but there were some pretty big stretches where mm, they weren't at all. And it was just like, eh. you know, like Minnesota Timberwolves took care of business against the Phoenix Suns. You know, they won convincingly. OKC took care of business against the Pelicans. Boston Celtics, again, didn't necessarily 100% take care of business. They had moments where they took care of business, and they obviously had some big games where they took care of business. But as a whole, it should have been even easier for them. It really should have been. Um, and, and a lot of times when the Celtics blew out or won convincingly against Miami, it was because Miami was just so cold. It wasn't even because of like the great things that the Celtics were necessarily doing. It was just that Miami wasn't good enough. Their shots weren't falling. So I don't. I, I thought too before, before uh, like months and months ago, like way before the playoffs start, started that I was like, oh, you know what? I really was thinking that I would not be surprised if it's Denver versus Boston, you know, and then it's really kind of like, you know, how's that going to unfold? And I'm just no longer sure that that's really the case. Um, I think the Timberwolves are something special and I think OKC is special. And it's hilarious to me that you give the Dallas Mavericks 18%, um, Minnesota Timberwolves 13, OKC 8%. You give the Knicks a better chance than OKC. That is such a disgrace. That really, really is. And same thing with the Dallas Mavericks. That's a disgrace. It really, really is. So OKC is beating Dallas and the Minnesota Timberwolves are beating Denver. And if I'm right, I'll do a little victory lap. And if I'm wrong, you know what? I can't. I look forward to you guys telling me how dumb I am in the comments below. But those are just my thoughts. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.